All right, we are live. Hello, everyone. Um, good evening, good afternoon, and good morning, everyone. Uh, without further delay, you guys all know the familiar face, the king of Adelaide, who took out the sixth time, South, uh, you know, best wedding photographer of Australia. The very, very key, the very, very Lu, key Lu. Uh, great friends of mine. Um, the crazy rich Asian wedding photographers. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's uh, that's key. And uh, one times, one times best wedding photographer of Australia, right? It's the title I always want. I never got it, but uh, yeah, you but you got it. So that's fine. <laughs> and he got my He got he got the um, Kilo actually got the best wedding uh, photographer of Australia. He got a title I want, and he also got the the client tells. I want to. I desire it. Like I only have that client title, like a couple of times in my dream. Really? Um, um, yeah, yeah. Whatever. He has the richer, uh, richer. I, I, I guess yeah. uh, you know Italian, Greek, and the Le Lebanese um, community, which is known as you know big fat wedding, which is great, right? Lots of people and uh, lots of luxury, lots of luxury car, crazy dance, best music, and best food, best food, best food. Yeah. <laughs> I okay. just can't emphasize enough. Okay. So um, yeah, so he has this uh, beautiful images he's going to share with you guys. So stay tuned and I'll leave that to Kilu, right? Yes, yes. Hello everyone. Um, Let's start the start from the beginning. Yeah. They want to see and my screen. Just bear me for a sec. So everyone can see my slide. Harry, you can see my slide. Yes. Yes, we can yeah. see your slides. Let me just put it on there. Perfect. Hi, VJ. Hi, Gordon. Hi, Julio. Oh, Key, okay. you have lots of fans. I'm just gonna <laughs> sit back and relax. Uh, no, you see, no, that's no. the that's the crazy, uh, crazy um, client's tale I talked about. All his bride is just so beautiful and super I'm hot. I'm just and, uh, his, groom, his grooms are all like, um, I don't know, God of War in, in Greek, in Greece. <laughs> Yeah, man. Uh, so just a quick introduction about myself, guys. Uh, my name is Key Lee. Uh, Key pronounced K-E-Y, Key. Um, I've been in the wedding industry for nine years now. And wedding, doing wedding photography is really my number one passion. Um, that's what I love the most. I just love the energy, love the happiness, love the um, celebration. But above all, I love the... the um, things that you can't predict in a, on a wedding day. You know, the, the stress is all part of the fun of being a wedding photographer. Um, in the last five years, um, I've been very fortunate to also do um, quite a few commercial and family photos as well. And um, I was, I'm actually very blessed that I'm able to have that as a um, second income for the studio because especially in time like now where we have COVID-19, you know, um, pretty much most of my wedding has all been postponed. So personally, myself, I haven't done a wedding since uh, March, uh, since March this year. Um, my business be captured. Uh, we've, we've, we've shot um, uh, quite a few weddings since COVID, but uh, personally, I haven't been really shooting much. I've just been using this time to um, to um, relax a bit because I haven't, um, haven't really had a break for so long. So I'm just using this opportunity to uh, take a break. Uh, and... Luckily, our, business, um, our company, we have a, a lot of commercial family photos that can uh, keep us um, going during this uh, crazy time. Um, so that's just a little bit of my, a uh, little bit of background, but let's get, get, um, get into um, our main topic for today, which is um, what I feel are simple lighting techniques that will wow your client. Um, I'm guilty of this as well. When I first started um, as a wedding photographer, I feel like you always have to have all the gears, all the lens, all the cameras um, in your bag. Um, you know, you, you tend to overcomplicate things a bit. And through experience, I learned, you know, it's best to have the 
it's best to keep your equipment to the to a low level and concentrate on what's more important, which is in in the case your your subject. Sometimes when you've got too much lens to choose from or too much camera to choose from, um, that can really blur your your judgment and your creativity on the day of a wedding shoot. Um, later on, I'm going to go through all the all the equipment I use on a on a wedding day, and also on um, on you know on some um, special project as well. So, so hi guys, I wouldn't be uh, we wouldn't say hi to everyone, but uh, all the qu questions are welcome, and uh, he would love to answer all of yeah. your questions, all of your questions. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, so my, my best advice is to keep things simple uh, and really concentrate on the day of doing a wedding shoot, really concentrate on the subject, uh, creating the mood and creating that, um, that wonderful image where the couple will, um, you know, enjoy for, um, for the rest of their life. Um, so, for example, with this uh, first image here, um, with, the, with the bride standing in her home, this was just using the one, um, the one V1, and uh, a twenty four seventy, and uh, and the V1 was just to um, was um, put on top of my camera and bounce off the roof, uh, of the ceiling to create this nice simple, simple clean look, uh, and which is what I, I really like. Um, let's go to the next slide. So here I want to talk to you about the different style that I I enjoy doing. Um, uh, for my wedding photography, a lot of um, a lot of people tend to ask me, "Oh, Key, what do you think your your wedding style is like? Your your photos like?" I tend to be a bit greedy. I, I like a bit of everything, and and I'm able to do this um, when I discovered you know using flash, um, because using flash can let me achieve a lot of different style, um, which will satisfy you know a variety of different um, clientele. Uh, for example, with this first one here, um, you know, this is what I call a clean, clean style. Um, and I would recommend something like this to my couple when they, when I know their weddings are more, more, you know, everything is white, everything is very vogue looking, everything is very crisp and clean. Uh, and to achieve this look, you know, um, you really need to use a lot of flash to really, um, uh, to really get rid of a lot of shadow um, from your, from your photos. However, when you are very good at using your flash and know how the flash work, you can also create a, another different style, which is you know what I call dramatic, which is totally opposite style. Before uh, key, sorry to yep. uh, interrupt. Before we go to the dramatic, do you want to in, in, enlarge on the clean a bit so people would? Oh, able you can see it there. Else? Yeah, I think on my side it's a bit smaller. How about so that? Just, oh, that looks great. That looks great. So, so this is the what I call the clean style. And then um, again, you know, this is achieved through using a lot of flash. Um, another version, another style that I, I like doing is what I call dramatic. And again, yeah. um, if you just rely solely on- if I may, Sorry, if I may interrupt, but yep. can, can you address two questions here? Sure. Uh, which I can't. How many lights? Can you see the question on the, on the screen? No, because I'm in full oh, screen. Yeah, yeah sorry, buddy. Yeah. How many lights on a wedding? Yeah, yeah. Um, I will quickly address that. I'll go to my my equipment page. Okay, so this is the. Oh, so we will address that later. That's fine. I, I don't oh, want to. I'll, later. Yeah. I'll get back yeah. to that question. Yeah, and uh, do they usually decide the subjects? Be the couple or people or all together? All together. Normally, normally at a, at my consultation uh, with the couple, which is around two months before the wedding day. Um, this is what I'll go through with them. I'll ask them, so what's your style of your wedding? A lot of them will say, oh, it's very clean, very black and white, or some will say it's very rustic, very earthy. Then I would recommend, you know, maybe you should have your style this way or this way. So, and that's the main reason why people want to come with, to my company, Be Captured, is because, you know, they don't have to have the one style. They can have, um, you know, they can have a bit of everything if they want to, um, which I'm totally, totally um, in favor of doing that. So get back to the slide. Um, um, using flash allow me to go clean, or I can go go dramatic. Um, and if you just rely on natural light, it's really hard to achieve this kind of look. So for example, um, if you look at the groom looking out the window on the top, 
right hand corner you know i have an assistant using um godox v1 um triggering it um on the window um you know bouncing you know directing the light on the grid to create this really dramatic type look um just an example that you can do now there's some couple that want to come to me and you know if their wedding is in a you know in a winery you know it's very rustic you know um so sorry let me quickly interrupt key every, yeah. every time you ch you change your slides i um i yeah. would ask uh, questions uh, okay. for our audiences um it says we're discussing how you achieve clean looks and dramatic looks We give a general indication, right? We wouldn't discuss it in details, but we will discuss the look of 1960, right? We will give a bit deep. We will focus on one look today, yeah, right? We are, Rather than showing people 10 different things. That's right. And um, yeah. and I will, I, will, I can, I can touch a bit more on the clean look and the dramatic look when I, when I, when I go through more of the individual photo, uh, wedding photos yeah. that I'm going to go through later yeah. as well. Yeah. So we, we yeah, I mean, I, yeah, we have we'll time. be able to. Yeah. But the main focus will be 1960 first, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Um, and here's another question. Um, yeah. Say, so do you use lights indoor? I I love using light indoor. Um, even if it's a bright room, I still like using light indoor because um, when you use flash, it makes editing so much easier. And yeah. and I can go back to my you know after doing the wedding, I can go back go back to the studio and then I can go. Oh, you know what? I, I, I all of a sudden I want to do a, a more dramatic look, or I want to do a clean look, and I can change my mind if I want to. That's why I always use uh, that. Yeah, man, you are popular. You are on hot. You are on fire. There are lots <laughs> of questions. Let's just address the question first. Do you ever use high speed sync? Um, I do. I use okay, um. Photo. Yep. Ninety percent of the time, I'm always on high speed sync. Um. Mm. Um. Yeah, I can't think of any scenario that I'm not on high speed yet. Sync. So ninety percent of the time, I do use high speed sync. Mm -hmm. um, I don't actually, I don't actually use an eighty six hundred Pro. The highest one I have is an eighty four hundred Pro. Um, mm -hmm. for my photo. So that question can be addressed later, right? We will address your your kit, right? Your kit for wedding photography. Okay. So we will address okay. it later. Yep. Do you give clients to choose dramatic clean look output? <coughs> I do. I let client choose that. And if I feel on the day that their wedding is more suited to dramatic or clean, uh, vice versa, I would let them know. I'll go, you know, personally, after seeing your wedding and your styling, I think your photo will look better this way instead of that way. And most clients are like, you know, key up 100% trust in what you do. So just go your hardest. Yeah. Yeah, we will. I think he will try to mention the modifiers, right? I I think you, got, you have, you mainly just use AKR1 for yes. most of your images right so I honey do. uh he's fake just akr1 he's pretty much yeah. it pretty much what i use mm. yeah sure all right let's carry back oh on. man you're on fire <laughs> lots of fans keep the question coming guys i'll yeah. try to, i'll try to address them all um so yeah so for for waiting in a in a winery um you know some couple want to go for something that's more like this which is an earthy type look and that's totally fine you know, um, I'm a bit, I'm a, I'm a photographer that's a bit, um, what do you call it? I, I, I appreciate all different styles. And I think, you know, couple should have the ability to choose, you know, a different style and not just come to your studio for one set style. Um, but there is always in the, in the various different style, there's always that little bit of, um, you know, the big capture style in there, you know, it's still, it's still like, you know, it still has that kind of, um, flash clean look to it. Um, and the last style that I offer to my couple are what I call a soft style. So this is more suited to a beachy wedding and stuff like that. So when I wear, when I hear a couple that want to take photo at the beach or have a ceremony at the beach, you know, this is what I would recommend doing something like this. If you, at the beach, if you do a more like um, what I call a clean Vogue style, I personally, I feel it just doesn't match it as well. And this is another style that I, we do offer to our couple. Um, so what I'm going to go through now is what is in my bag. So this is before that. Can I? There we have new question coming. Sorry, buddy. It's okay. Seems rather right have a couple of questions. Do you see the house and the wedding hall before in most of the weddings? I guess she's no. asking. Do you do? Yeah. No, I don't. I don't. I don't go and see the houses uh, beforehand. 
because 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 I'm so familiar with how to use flash. No matter how bad the lighting condition in the house is, um, I'm confident I'll be able to overcome. Um, even if the house is is small or or even if it's messy, you know, I'll always find places um, that we can shoot. So yeah. personally, I don't think that's necessary. But you have to be yeah. wary, good at your lighting, and know how to um, how to yeah. um, highlight certain area and you know put um, the not as nice area in in, in the in the shadow so people don't see. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I would address that in the next question in the next line. Yep. Here yeah. we go. Perfect. So Ooh, easy. This is what is in my camera uh, bag. All right. So on a wedding day, I'll have two Sony A7R3. Um, one of it, I will put my, I will put um, a wide angle, which is a Sigma F 1.8, uh, 14 mil. And the other one, sorry. Uh, what's this? Let's put this on the side. Um, and the other body, I would always attach my 2470. You guys, um, you guys will soon see. I use 2470 for almost 80 percent of my wedding shoot. Um, I could potentially shoot a whole wedding with my 2470 if I want to. Um, that's how much I love that lens. And the other two lenses I have in my body are the are the G Master 135. Um, for ceremony in church area where I need more rich, and a 50 mil micro, which is for more um, more um, detail photos. The only two flash I bring to my weddings are the Godox V1 and the 8200 Pro, just for just for my location photo. So I only use the 8200 Pro for location photo, and I use two V1 for 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 my wedding. For and that's pretty much it. I do have an 8300 Pro and 8400 Pro. Um, I mainly use that more for my for my special project. Um, and today, I'll, today I'm going to demonstrate to you guys um, a 60, 70 shoot that I've done using the 82, 300 Pro and the 80, 400 Pro in that uh, later on um, in, in, in the evening. So before so, you change the slides, um, yeah. he says high per sync, but I don't think you have 8600, right? Do you? No, I don't. So sorry, my uh, key doesn't have 8600. Um, yeah. He wouldn't be able to answer that question. Um, mm. Don is asking, is that the V1 modifier or 8200 Pro modifier? That's the reason I why. I like, yeah, that's the reason why I like the V1 and 8200 Pro because I use the same modifier. Yeah, and so on that, the way, the, it will be one yeah. set, and it fits both. Yeah. Can you give any tips to manage speed light in the smallest area? My biggest tip to you is to understand how to use your flash in manual mode. And it's not really that hard because when you know how to do um, set your, your flash in manual, uh, even whatever lighting condition, whatever size the area is, you'll be easily uh, able to manage that. And in my later, later, later in the slide, I'll, I'm going to address some of this as well. So you can see how I use um, manual. Yeah, I think it's pretty much in the same question. So yeah, mm. you answer. You kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> Which is good. Really can. Really can. All right, that's the question for now. Let's keep it going. Okay. And um, just to touch on the manual, the reason why I prefer manual over TTO is because um, you know, if I was to um, if my lighting is not right or not perfect, and I want a certain type of look. Um, changing on manual is so is so so fast, and uh, only because now with you know with especially now with Godox where you can uh, control your light with a with a remote on um, with a remote trigger, you can change all that settings so quickly. Whereas in the past before Godox, when I was using other flash system, you know changing changing your light your your output is so hard. I, I remember I used to call out to my system, "Can you change the one over four or one over eight? Oh, I'll bring it back to one over two. Um, that was really hard. Whereas now with the new Godos trigger, that is so easy because I can do that all, all by myself um, with my camera, on, on the trigger on my camera. Yeah. 
So moving on. Yeah. Um, this is one of my We have a question. Yep. It says, one twenty centimeters reverse mount umbrella compared to Octabox. Um, I, uh, I, I will address that question. Yeah. My, uh, I think if you are shooting yeah. outdoor, definitely get an umbrella because with Octabox, it's very hard to carry around with and, and um, unless it's foldable one, right? So right. outdoor, do whatever you, 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 um, you want. With indoor, depends. If you want a softbox look, go for the octabox. If you want a um, softer look, go for the umbrella. But depends on the interior. The white one will be softer than the silver one. So that's yeah. a general indication. And it comes down to what look you're trying to achieve as well with your photo uh, to determine what you're trying to get. Yeah. So, so this is one of my all time favorite photos. Um, We've done this um, uh, photo with uh, with the bride and her bridesmaid um, at the reception. The only reason why we done it at the reception is uh, we ran out of time during the day on our location photo. Um, that's why we did it there. Um, so this is um, this shot was literally you know set up very quickly. I, I sneaked the the bridal party out from their reception into the into the into the reception foyer and grabbed this and and. Took this photo really quickly. We we're just using one V1 and um, 2470 lens. Uh, the setting for this was 60, uh, aperture is 4.5, and ISO was a thousand. All I did was I put a, the dome on top of my V1, chucked the V1 on top of my camera, and then and then fired it so that the V1 is bouncing off the ceiling to get the shot. Um, so that was literally you know done in 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 in, in literally a, 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 like one or two minutes just for the shot. Uh, what took longer was really just um, setting the bridesmaid up to where I wanted to be. Um, that's what took it longer. But actually taking the shot and working out the setting was um, um, super fast and easy. Again, with my with my flash, I would have just used one over four. But if I feel that was not strong enough um, on my on my remote on my Godot remote, I would just turn it up to one over two, and that would fix up my exposure. So that's why you know. I do it like that. Um, that's why I shoot manual because it's so much faster to change my setting. Um, the next photo. <coughs> this one, um, this one, you know, as you can see, the setup is amazing. Um, and you know, when you when you see a setup that's this amazing, is it's kind of um, good and bad because um, good is you know your your photo can look amazing however you take it, but the bad thing is. How can you make the bride and groom be the star of the setup when you know when there's so much pretty stuff happening around around them? And this is why, even though you know the reception is very very bright, very clean, very white, I still choose to use flash. And all I did here was put the AD two hundred Pro and got my assistant to stand at the back of the bride and groom and back it. That's all I did, um, so that there's a there's a small you know, they, they pop out from the setup um, uh, a bit more than if I've not used a flash. So this is quite important. Um, I would still do that even in a, in a bright area. So that my, the main thing is to make the subject, you know, um, more, 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 pun, uh, more dominant in the, in the photo. Um, the setting again, as you can see, is um, the speed is 160, apertures are 4.5 and ISO is 400. And here I'm using the Sigma 14 mm lens. Again, super easy, you know, um, the setting for the 8200 back then would be one over eight. Again, on manual, but if I need, if I need to change the setting, I just do it on my, on my remote, you know, even if it's going up, up a bit or lower the power a bit, and I can do that very quickly to get that perfect, perfect shot. So yeah, so that's this photo. So next here's one. a question. He's yeah. asking, Henning is asking, the visual difference in bouncing with dome and without dome. The with the dome, I, I I get a much softer, softer, softer feel on the photo. So that's what I'll get. But the dome do lower your power um, a bit as well. So it, it, it comes down to the situation, uh, how how much power you want your flash to release. Most of the time, now um eighty percent of the time, I would put a dome on it because I, I do want the light to be soft and not harsh. Kid, do you have 850? 
Um, I used to. I used to have an A50, but since then, you reckon I, you can use your X Pro to lead A50 and V1 at the same time? Because I never had a V8, V850 before, so I, I'm not too yeah, sure about that. You can do it at the same time. It's not a problem. Okay. So yep, yeah. your answer. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. Um, this is another amazing photo that, I've, um, that I love of the couple where, um, again, all this photo I'm showing you is on the wedding day um, where we're under a lot of time pressure. Now, this photo, I could, I could do it without using um, a flash um, because, um, because um, you know, there's a beautiful lamp on the side um, that will light up my gifted light I need. However, I still decided to use a flash because I wanted, I wanted the photo to look even more three-dimensional um and and it pops out a bit more so here i purposely overexposed the background the reason why i've done this is so that you know we'll get this really nice um halo type of um mystical type of feel from the window light falling in from the back of the of the grooms um uh, sort of a shot where you know he's leading 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 his bride to you know to 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 a stairways to heaven kind of feel is what i'm trying to get here um, the light that I use here is the V1, again, just one light, very simple, my assistant standing in, in, that, little, um, in that little room where there's an orange, um, orange uh, light coming from there. I'll just put um, the, um, an orange gel on there on, on top of my V1 and fire it away to get the shot. Um, the setting, as you can see, is um, 60, f2.8, and ISO is um, 1250 for this shot. Again, using the 2470 lens to achieve this photo. Moving along. Um, this is another um, another image um, where, very simple, just ask the bride and groom to walk out um, of the front of the of, of this of this beautiful archway. Um, but as you can see in the image, um, you know, the sun was probably, the sun was facing more towards that building in the background and it's not shining towards the couple. But I really want, I really want the couple to have this really you know this feel of them walking into into the warm sunlight. So I got um you know I use the eighty two hundred Pro here. Again backlit, very simple. You know on manual setting. Um, in this one I I knew to get that really sun effect. You know I had to put an orange gel in there, but I knew the power has to be really strong. Um, and you know straight away I just popped it straight into full power on the eighty two hundred Pro, and then adjust my speed and ISO. Um, to, to get the perfect exposure. Um, it's really simple. So I always have an assistant with me on the wedding day, purely just to hold a flash, um, to do, you know, backlit or just in the front of the bride's screen's face on an angle uh, to get this really quick shot. And these are really simple, easy, you know, flash technique um, that really, you know, it's so fast and simple to do, but it really add a new, a new depth to your image and something that the couple don't normally see because of what they're probably used to are more natural light photos. But when you start introducing, you know, some, 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 um, some artificial light, you know, it, you know, it, it, it wowed them all the time. So moving along, um, rain photo. Everyone loves a rain photo. Um, the couple loves it. I love doing it. Um, this photo was taken in Adelaide Hills where it was probably the worst a downpour I've experienced in my nine years of shooting. Um, it took a lot of convincing for the couple to get up, but um, I was so blessed that, you know, she, she, um, the couple was willing to, um, you know, really to get out of the house and do it. I mean, get out of the car and do it, which is, which is great. I, um, my assistant didn't really like it because um, he was soaking wet, holding the 8200 Pro um, at the back. And again, back lit, um, I decided to put an um, orange gel because um, the reason why I wanted an orange gel is because everything was really um, the color because of the big rain and storm. You know, every, the color and everything was very dull, very gray. So I wanted just um, a bit of um, a bit of uh, life in the photo, uh, and then I used the orange gel. And then again, backlit, very simple manual, manual um, uh, the flash on manual. Um, I did put a grid on here as well um, because I don't want the, the light to spill too much. Um, I know a lot of photographers would probably not put a grid on it because they want to capture more of the rain. But I think um, in this case, I made the decision to put a grid to control the light a bit more. Um, again, it's a 2470 lens, you know, 100, uh, 100 speed, f2.8, and then ISO 1250. 
So as a, as a trick, I always tend to start my flash power around one over four. And then from then I would adjust it, you know, higher, lower and see how I go um, to get that perfect image. Um, I tend to um, get my camera setting right to the exposure that I wanted to um, to look, the photo to look, and then and then it's just up to changing the power of the flash to get my desired feel for the image. Before you change the slide, yeah. How did I protect the the light in the rain? I I actually didn't. I I I ran the risk and I I just got the system to hold hold the light in the rain for that one. So, so it, it survived the rain for me in that case. So, yeah, because I, I didn't have time, uh, have time right. to. Work. Yeah, uh, let me give some advice. Um, I usually put some, you know, when you go to Woody's, um, you know, they have some free sort of plastic bag mm -hmm. uh, around the, the fruits area, stuff like this. Just get some, or, you know, the fresh bags for your sandwiches. Just put them around, just put leave some bags in the in the car and you can get out whenever you want. Yeah. If you want to carry something in your, uh, in your camera bag to be more compact, not me, but a friend of mine actually used Condon. Oh, no. <laughs> but, yeah, it's very flexible and uh, it's waterproofing. It's proofing lots of things, so that would that would work too. So here's your <laughs> tip. Thanks for the tip. I remember that one. <laughs> yeah, mate. <laughs> All right, moving along. Next image. This one. This is a a, um, a classic example where where you shouldn't use flash. Uh, the reason why um, is because, as you can see in the in the photo, um, the shadow is from is on the left hand side, so the sun is coming from the from the right to the left. Um, the green lighting the green's face is is no problem. It's easy. Uh, the sun will do that. But if I if I have the bride facing the opposite direction, her face will be all dark and 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 and, and you know in the shadow. So. So this is one of those photos where you know you can get the groom to step in front a little bit, and then you can get the bride um, to um, get the flash just on the bride's face to get to get this kind of look. Um, again, I use the AD two hundred Pro. Um, I use the AD two hundred Pro a lot on location because it's so compact, small, and um, and the modifiers fit on the V one, which I often use for indoor and reception and ceremony. Um, that's the reason why I love these two combination on a wedding day. Um, you know the setting you can see is there. Um, I wanted I wanted more detail of the background, so the, I chose an f 5.6. And in this photo, the flash I would have went full power with the flash. Um, so I would have um, just put the um, the round head into the 8200 Pro plus the dome on top, um, just to get that just to get that softer look on the bride's face. Very simple, using a uh, using a Sigma Sigma lens. Um, for this one, 14 mil to get this photo. This one, another another quick photo you should do on your wedding day. Very easy, you know. Sorry, Key. Um, yeah. Can we just go back to quickly go back to the previous slides? No. Yeah. So Jose is asking, is this a composite veil? No. So I was actually holding the veil while holding the camera so i'm holding the left hand side of the veil and then mm -hmm. and then um i think it was a groomsman or the bridesmaid holding the other side of the veil and then um just let the wind blow it and then you create that so not composite so it's, you don't have time so it's one composite. shot yeah you don't have time to do composite okay. on a wedding collection where you add yeah. where you have the hundreds of different wedding photos yeah so you try to get there too much work pretty much work that's why you always yeah. need to like, try to get the perfect exposure yeah, um, setting, you know, on the day. Master Key needs to save time to um, to enjoy his mansion as well. His um, Adelaide's, um, you know, retirement life. <laughs> and, 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 and don't listen to Aries. It's, it's, it's just a dump. <laughs> yeah. I love you, man. I love um, you too. Anyway, <laughs> we call that tough love. Tough love. Yes. <laughs> spreading spreading the, the wrong message. <laughs> Um, this photo, 
all that every every <laughs> every wedding photographer should do on a wedding day. Um, um, it's the reason why I like doing something like this is because it it, it gets the you know if you come across a bridal party or um, you know that is very shy, that's not comfortable with the camera. This is a good way to you know break the ice a bit, uh, get into a bit of fun, uh, spraying the the champagne, and um and this bride went. Went, went crazy with the champagne. I only told her to shake it like once or twice and she just kept shaking it. So it went crazy. Um, so most, most wedding photographer will probably, you know, find a, find a nice even light area and just shoot this photo without using flash. The reason why I recommend, and this is a, a, a good quick technique is just to use a flash to do this um, very quickly. Um, normally I would just do this um, with, my, with my V1. Um, it will be powerful enough with a V1. But at the time, um, my sister was only had the 8200 Pro with her, so so we just pointed the 8200 Pro straight at the at the subject, and then when the spray comes out, you know, it, it will it will it will catch the water, the, the champagne, the alcohol will catch all the light uh, when the flash goes off to get this photo. Um, this is just something quick, fun to do, and you know, clients always love you know this type of photo. Um, again, the setting you can see is you know speed is 100. Um, I, I don't want my speed to be too too low in this one. I want it to be pretty high, um, so that it can um, it can capture all the different droplet uh, when the champagne sprays. Um, my f should always be high because you want you want everyone in the bridal party to be nice and sharp in this photo. And ISO is depending, you know, how much light you want in and out. You just set that accordingly. Again, manual. Um, my setting would be one over four, which is my go for, go to setting. I always start from one over four, and then and then, and then you know, reduce it, increase it based on that. One over four tends to work in most situations for me. All right, moving along. Sorry, a quick question. Yep. Uh, from RJ, he says, can a chip of camera flash still produce good quality lighting setup? I think my, um, RJ, if you pay attention that for every slide he actually shares with you, the light he used, so just pay attention. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, another, 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 another beautiful reception setup. Um, again, you know, everyone should, everyone should, should, you know, should do some backlit light in a reception room because it's just really nice. It produces a really nice glow for the couple, and above all, you know, it it separates the couple from the background. Um, that's the aim. Um, and if you, if I would have, if I would have um, put the flash not at the back but at the front, it would be too too harsh in my opinion um, to get a shot like this. Um, again, you know, I use 8200 Pro a lot on on a wedding day um, to do a lot of the uh, more portrait type work. Um, you know, the speed's 200, the aperture's 3.5, ISO 800. Again, in this photo. My my flash. I started off with manual one over four, and then it was too powerful. There was too much um, light bouncing off the the back of the head, and then I just um, I, what to do that? I, I made two changes. I lowered the power to one over eight. I still kept my uh, camera setting because I know my camera setting was perfect when I without the light. So what I normally do before putting the flash into my photo, I get the camera setting to be perfect exposure first. Um, a lot of the time. And what I mean by perfect exposure is that exposed to the surrounding, not the couple, because I know the couple will be lit up by the flash. So I normally ex um, set my exposure to the setting and then and then leave my flash on manual mode to see what's the best power output to light up the couple. When I first started this one, I go, I go to one over four that was too bright and there was too much light spilling out of the couple's back, back of their heads. So what I do in the cases like this is chuck a grid on there, put a grid on there, lower the power to one over eight and boom you get that shot straight away and all this you know in my my system in her pocket she will have you know a grid and a, and a soft dome and some color gel that's always in her in her pocket in case i go um i will go oh chuck the grid in she'll chuck the grid in and then i change the power for my end on my trigger and then boom you know straight away i'll get a shot really quickly really efficiently um you know before before the reception starts Hmm. Hey, here's a question. He yeah. says 
he can he achieve the same result with TT520? I'm not sure about the model. So um TT520, you, you could achieve the same result, but from memory two two, um, but I'm not sure about modifiers. The main reason mm. why we get that look is Goidox has that very simple modifier where it's just it's magnetic for the V1 and I can just chuck it on straight away. Um, mm. most of the modified out there is 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 hard you to you know put velcro on or, or that kind of stuff. So so that's something to consider. Okay, right. So it's yeah. not only about the light, it's almost about the ecosystem, right? With run heads, yeah. Godox has the AKR1, it's probably makes would make your life easier. <clears throat> but I know there is um there is a square Godox head lights to run the heads and AKR1 adapter. I think it's it's very cheap, so you mm -hmm. might just say, well, get get that one." But I can't remember the model number. I'm sorry. But if you Google it up, it should be easy. That's right. So yeah, and every touch on a really good point. Uh, when you choose your lighting system, you know, for me, it's all about speed. On a wedding day, you know, I have so mm -hmm. much. Most of my bridal party are like big bridal party. You know, there's uh, you know, you know, you know, sixteen, eighteen, twenty bridal, you know, twenty in total in the bridal party. So it's all about the speed. And I don't have a lot of time, you know. Probably I'll be I'll be lucky if I have like, you know, sometimes I only have like half an hour. Um, I most 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 of the time I ask my couple to give me two hours, but I'll be lucky after ceremony, after congratulation, after family photo, if you even have two hours to do it. So it has to be fast. Your modifier has to be small so it can fit in a pocket. Uh, it's all about that. Um, it's all about speed for me. So this is um, another example where um, a lot of the time on the wedding day, you know, the couple would like to stop by a cafe, you know, have a nice meal. And, you know, rather than sitting there and watch the couple eat, you know, it's a good time to have some fun photos. It's a good time to, um, you know, get some um, get something different. Um, because after the couple of eating, the bridal parties relax a bit, have a bit of alcohol. I recommend them alcohol all the time. Um, you know, that's how you can. Uh, get them uh, to do a lot of crazy stuff, you know, and they're a lot more relaxed. So this is, you know, I, you know, a lot of time I'll do something like this with my bridal party, uh, and it'll be a fun. Only if they want to, of course. Uh, but most of them do, you know, do want to have that bit of fun. And again, this is very simple. It's just using the V1, one V1, one V1. In this, in this, in this shot, I have the V1 again. The V1 is is not even my system's not even holding the V1. The V1 is just on top of my Sony camera, and then. And then there was a white wall at the back of me. So I just bounced the V1 on the white wall at the back of me. And then so it hits, even it hits everyone. Um, so just one V1 using a 2470 lens. Um, I do like to use 2470 lens um, more than the wide angle because um, you know it's um it's less distortion. Uh, again, it comes down to less editing work for me later on. Um, and normally for good photo like this, I don't want to set my my power too high. I'm still, in this case, my power was more like one over eight because I wanted to recycle really quick um, for an action shot like this. Um, that's why my ISO is a bit high in this case, is a uh, one to 50. Um, my aperture, I don't want it to be too low as well. I want it to be fairly, you know, at, at around F4, even higher if I can, um, you know, because I want all the subject to be, you know, nice and sharp. Whereas if I go F2.8, probably only the bride and groom will be shot um, and speed 200. So in, uh, the reason why I always don't go over, under 200 for a group photo is because when they're moving around, you don't want to run the risk of them being a bit blurry. So 200 is always the, the minimum I would, I, would, I, would, I would keep my speed at if I want to do a more action style shot indoor. If I'm outdoor, it's a different story. Outdoor, you know, I can boost my speed all the way up. I can even make my, um, make my aperture even higher. Uh, for an outdoor type shot like this, all right? Very simple, one flash. Um, and this is another 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 trick that I normally go uh, when I when I choose a location. I always see if there's any nice white wall where I can bounce the light the light off to get that really to get that soft look without having soft boxes and stuff like that on a wedding day. Um, and I can I can I, and I don't have to bring the the bigger light out. I can just use my V1 and that will do. I'm even sometimes I'm even too lazy to use. Um, two v one. If I can get away one v one, I'll just do one v one. Mm. All right. Next. If there's no question, uh, next image. 
So this one, um, again, on location, um, Sarah and Jerry's wedding. This one is, um, I don't do this very often, but in this shot, I actually use two light instead of one light. Um, so two light instead of one light. Um, so I don't normally use more than more than one light on a wedding day. Um, so the reason why I did this was I wanted, um, I needed to try to get the bride and groom um, some light on their face because there's, um, you know, there wasn't enough light on there. I could have got the bride to uh, face her face towards the window, um, but I prefer the positioning here instead. That's why when it comes to a situation like this, where you want, where you're restricted to where the bride and groom can stand and you want a certain type of look, you know, this is when flash is so amazing because you can, um, you can pretty much overcome anything, any bad lighting condition. So there's one flash on the bride. The assistant was, um, was um, standing um, next to the bride on the left hand side. And then there's another flash um, um, uh, standing opposite the groom to light this one up. And the power for this one would be quite low. It would be, um, I know one over four will be quite high for this case, in this case because, because the, the, flash, the flash is pointing straight at the subject um, rather than bouncing off anything. You can see from the shadow, the shadow is quite harsh. So in this case, I would have put a, I, I, I placed a dome on my 8200 Pro and a dome on the V1. And again, just a, um, a 2470 lens to get this kind of look. Um, yeah, to get this kind of look. The other reason why I chose to use flash and not natural light for this one is because I wanted it really clean. I want it really white and crisp white. And um, having a flash to brighten up the subject and the room will make my editing easier uh, when I come home. Yep. So I just need a bit of water getting dry. Take your time. So guys, next one. So with this photo, this is another trick you can use with your couple. Um, when we arrived back um, at the, uh, when we went to this location, we wanted to go to this location because there was a nice sunset. I knew, I knew that this location had a, had a really good sunset. But on the day of her wedding, it was, um, it was overcast, and and um, you know, often the couple will be quite disappointed if they can't get a, a really nice sunset photo. Um, so it does. So to overcome that, you know, what I did was very simple. Just use the 8200 Pro, backlit again, put an orange gel on it, um, put an orange gel on it, and, um, and got you have your, the sunny boy. Yeah. So, <laughs> so this, yeah, so, so it's nice and simple. Again, again, all this fit in my assistant's pocket. So, uh, you know, all the, all the modifiers, she'll have all the colored gel, she'll have the grid, she'll have the, you know, the dome, all this just fit in the, in the pocket. And, and I can, you know, change all this, you know, very quickly. If I wanted a more, a more night look, I'll, I'll probably put a blue gel in there to get a cooler type of look. Um, again, just backlit. Um, I did put a grid on here because I don't want her dress, uh, because they're both in white, and I don't want it to be, um, um, you know, too much white, too much light leading, um, leaking out of there, the side of them. So, so I did put a grid, an orange gel um, on this photo. Um, <coughs> I saw it was quite high because it was pretty, it was getting dark um, because no sunset. Um, and then speed was quite low as well, 125. Uh, and here I chose to use F2.8 because I wanted the background to be a bit more softer, more blur. Um, the reason why I chose that setting. Mm. All right, moving along, next one. There's no questions. Oh, How come your cup? You, how come your couples uh, all look fantastic? Your groom are all look so handsome and the brides are always so hot. I, I'm, that's something I'm very blessed about. I just, I, just, I just keep getting really hot couple and I, I, I feel very lucky with that. <laughs> Which was a personal charisma, right, of key, master key. <laughs> I, I, love, I love all my couples. They're just, they're just all really hot, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. So this one is actually not, um, this, this one is um, actually in a forest. Um, and um, as you can see, uh, when we got there, we got really nice, um, 
um, sun, you know, you know, leaking in from the background, which is amazing, um, you know. And um, but in this area, um, the tree was the leaves at the bottom was actually quite, quite, quite tall. So <sighs> stop that. The the you know quite is tall. our wife is our wife calling says your um your lasagna or your <laughs> I don't know tiramisu is ready in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, come and enjoy it. So I might, I might, I might stop it here, guys, and I'll, I'll come back uh, in half an hour time. Okay. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> so with this photo, um, I actually got the couple standing on a chair, um, on a chair oh. to um, to um, elevate them. Um, and then um, and then I got my sister in order in the eighty two hundred pro with an orange gel to try to um, to try to you know mimic some of the um. Orange, the orange warm sunlight coming in from the background to get this look. So that's pretty much um, most of the most of the images. Um, with this one, very quickly, I wanted to include this one is because, you know, when I was a couple in this location, you know, there was really nice sunlight coming from the back. Um, so in situations like this, I, I would normally I carry some smoke bomb with me, and I would normally light a smoke bomb to get that really nice angel hair at the back. Um, and, um, you know, situation like this is perfect for smoke bomb and that actually will, those, those angel light in the back is not actually, um, photoshopped in. And then in this case, I just have a flash of V1 at the, at the front, lighting the couple up, uh, to get this cover look. And this is again, a, a really, a really nice trick and it's a great way to wow your client. Um, so that's pretty much uh, most of my, uh, that's pretty much an example of my wedding. Um, if you want to see, is that your, uh, is that your assistant smoking in the background? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, oh man, poor Tony. That's, a, that's like two or three smoke bombs let off at the same time. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty much, um, that's, that's some of the example I have, um, how you can use flash very quickly, efficiently on a wedding day. Um, if you want to see how I actually use flash. Um, you know, behind the scene, you know, you can go to YouTube, this YouTube, I have a video there where, um, where it, it, it doc document how I actually shot a real wedding and how I used the flash on that day. You can go there and have a look. Um, okay, would, would you be having any workshop online or offline in short future? So people can see the legend in flash himself. I'll, I've been telling myself to do a workshop for the last nine years, but never had the time to do it yet. So yeah. I would love to do one. Um, don't mm. get me wrong. I'd love to do one. I just haven't had the time to do it yet. But okay. In the very near future, I can I can do one. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> sure. Um. So when I was um going on my YouTube channel, um, not YouTube, go to YouTube channel. There was a lot of questions. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on 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 these wedding photos because I want to spend more time on the a recent shoot that I've done that I, I really really enjoyed doing a lot. It was a 60, 70 shoot um, where I want to talk about that a bit more and how I'd show you guys how I use light in that. Um, and I want to share that with you. But before I go there really quick, uh, very quickly, a lot of people ask me how I done this photo on the wedding day um, because the, and this is, this is, this is, you know, this is, um, this is interesting point because every time when you have something really bright like firework at the back, your subject's face will be very dark. And again, I didn't use any fancy light. I just used the one V1 and the V1 was just on top of my camera. Very simple. But what I did do is I put a dome on top. The reason why I put a dome is not only would it soften my image, but it will actually um, let my light hit the subject a bit more. Uh, even though my V1 is pointing straight at the ceiling, bouncing to the subject, but with a dome, it will actually give me a bit more light towards the subject and it's softer as well. Very simple. My power would just be one over four. Um, and then the speed is 200, f4, um, and ISO is, is 800. Uh, again, 2470 lens, very simple. Uh, just one flash, and the flash is not even held by the system. It's just on top of the camera to get this type of shot. Um, very quickly, another see, one. People, people are already demanding your workshop. <laughs> master key, must, uh, must have something <laughs> coming up in the future, yeah? Thank you, guys. I'll, I'll try to. <laughs> um, thank you for your support, though, guys. Um, so. This one again, very, very simple. Um, you know, when you get, when you get, um, you know, the couple walking and the firework coming from the side, you know, this is, this is, um, this is again, don't, don't go, 
don't think too much about your lighting setup. Just put your flash on top of your camera, put a dome on top, and, and um, you know, put your, your settings. Um, and again, my light would just be starting at 1 over 4 again, very simple, 1 over 4. And then I actually don't, set, don't change the setting of my light in this case. I use my speed to control the ambience of the, the photo. So if they come in, the firework is, is lights up and the face is too dark, I'll just reduce the speed a little. Or, or, if, or if the picture is too bright, I just increase the speed a little and everything else is constant. And that's how you can quickly get a photo like this very quickly in a situation like this. Because these are one of those photos that you must get right um, because the couple always want this photo. And if you stuff it up, you yeah, you 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 probably stop your career. So again, very simple. Keep your flash simple, one over four. Put it on top of your camera, and then put your um you know ISO at around you know uh, um you know not too high, not over one thousand. Because the reason why it's not over one thousand is because when the firework light up, it's going to be so bright. Um, but always um you know put your um, put your aperture constant and use your speed to control how much light you're going to let in or out. Mm. Yes, yeah, so a question says, do you use uh, gel in this photo in this photo or no? No gel. Did you use no gel? gel? Okay, Just no gel. Okay. On top of the V1. Very simple. Okay. Yeah, sure. keep it simple. Okay, this is what I'm really excited to share with you guys about. It's the recent shoot I've done a couple of weeks, uh, last week. It's a 60, 70 style shoot. Um, it's for, um, it's for uh, one of my brides that I'm going to shoot her beautiful wedding next year. Um, and then, but she really wanted to do um, a 60, 70 film shoot. And I've never done a shoot like that. And I never edit any photos like that in, in my life. So when I get a project like this, I'm really excited because I can try something new uh, and I'll see how, you know, how I can, how I can uh, get that kind of look. So before I do that, you know, 60, 70s, when this is straight from Pinterest, guys. So 60, 70s is all about color, fun, checkerboard, you know, stripes, honeycombs, you know, kind of block and, you know, roller skate. That's that era. So before I approach a project like this, you know, do a bit of research, get a bit of idea what the photo looks like. Um, now, what I found out is 60, 70, that's when Polaroid was so popular. And that was perfect. Then I, you know, I decided to, for this photo shoot, I used Polaroid, the Polaroid style, in my in my in my photo to get that look that I want to re, um, reflect the 60 70 look. So what does Polaroid look like? Polaroid is more, you know, it has a more organic feel compared to digital cameras. You know, it's it's a bit the image is not perfect. You know, it has a haze effect. You know, the contrast is lower, and there's a high level of um a noise compare uh, because cameras was pretty bad back back in the days. And however, it's because of these that makes Polaroid photos. You know so unique and so beautiful at the same time you know um and and for this street i've decided to you know mimic the polaroid feel um and again for this uh for this special project um i decided to mainly use the 82 8300 pro and the 8400 pro um for, for this photo for, for this photo shoot so this is what um the image looks like um, so I try to I try to make it more of a Polaroid feel. I try to look for walls that you know that um that are more the 60s, 70s style. And in this one, the lens would be a 2470 lens, and you know the speed would be 800 f5 ISO 200. Um, and um, anyways, why don't you um play the video to see yep. how my light was set up to get this photo? Cool. The first one. The first one, please. Yeah. Sure. Um, I'll let you comment, audio yeah. comment on it. Yeah. Sorry? I'll let you audio, audio comment on it. Yeah. Can you see it? Uh, yep, yeah, I can see it. OK, oh, I'm going to add that. All right, let's play it. So I use a big soft box in this. So the box, soft box is facing uh, opposite to the sun.
Now, the reason why I didn't want the um, um, Daniela here, um, she's not a model. She's um, actually going to be my bride for next year. Um, she she should be a model. Um, she's gorgeous. Um, the reason why I didn't I didn't want um, I, I didn't want her to face the sun is because um, if you if you get the model to um, uh, Daniela here to, to face the sun, uh, she would you know she would um, split a little, and um, you know um, her eyes will you know her eyes won't feel comfortable. That's why I decided for her to face the other direction away from the sun, and that's why we need a light there to light her up. Otherwise, her her face will be dark there. So we play the <coughs> second video, anyways, please. Sure. Of course. Give me one sec. Share screen. Can you see it? Uh, yes. Again, she was getting um she was getting some good light from where the sun is, but um her her right side her from her direction her left side of the face was getting a bit a bit too dark, and that's why I put a nice soft box there to the, uh, lighten those shadow up um, to get this next photo here. So the setting the setting for that was um quite simple. Again, I still shoot in manual mode, um and my setting and my setting for the flashes would um would be around 1 over 8, 1 over 4 to start with. Um, and then I'll adjust it um, accordingly. Um, so in this case, it was F, F5, um, speed is 800 and ISO 200 to get this um, get this photo and get this look. So moving along to the next slide. So that's what it looks like um, without flash. Should I switch back to your side? Oh, yes. Thank you. OK, no worries. Here we go. Yep. Whoops. But can everyone see this? Um, so this is just a quick one. Um, when when I when I when I get Daniela to face the other way, and without a flash, you know, all her face would just be in in, in the shadow. So this photo, I really love her in this photo. Um, for this one, I used the 80, 80, um, 80, Pro because I wanted to, to to mimic some some nice warm sun coming from the right hand side to get this look. So here I used the yellow gel, um, yellow gel um, on top of the on, on the light, and um, I put the light on her right hand side, you know, her left hand side from her from the picture, her left hand side. And then shine the light in to get that really nice warm glow. And um, I really, really, really wanted that warm look as well because um, I feel like that warm looks really suit the 60s, 70s style. And in this case, it really suit the dress, the beautiful dress she's um, wearing as well. Um, the setting is quite simple. You know, it's F F5. I want it to be quite, quite everything to be in detail um, with ISO 200 and then the speed 500 in this one. Again, I can play you guys the video now to um, show you guys how my light was placed in um, behind the scene. So the, video the th third one. Yes, please. Can you see it? Yep. Yep. So that's the yellow gel that I put on. And then I also use the barn door as well because I wanted the light to be directional. So she walks out and the light, the light is actually where the where the yellow, yellow line on the wall is. That's where I put it there. Even though I had the 8300 um, on the on the right hand side, in, in this case, I actually didn't use the 8300. I just used the orange one to get that look. So moving along. And 
is not working. So moving along. So that's what it would look like if I did not use that uh, a flash in this situation and without that orange, without that orange um, light to mimic the sun, the image in my opinion looks, uh, looks a bit flat. I, I love this photo personally. Um, um, it's very 60, 70 in my opinion. Um, again, I've, 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 I've kept my AD400 Pro in this one, but this time what I've done is I, I put the AD400 Pro um, on towards her, her, towards the left hand side. All right. And again, with the orange gel um, and this one, and then I use the, the there's a wall there with with a uh, with love holes for it, and I use that to frame my my subject um, to get this shot. Um, I I'm not sure if I had the barn door on there. I forgot. So let's play the video areas to see if there was a barn door on that on that on this shot. Okay, sure. Let's close that one. Screen tab number four, right? Yeah, it should be number four. <coughs> oh, sexy man. Look at your pose. <laughs> the feminine side of Master Key. <laughs> it's good, huh? So actually I remember it wrong. Lucky there's a video. I actually had the orange the 8400 Pro on the outside of the wall. Uh, and then shooting in. Um, to get that to get that feel. Oh no no no, no I was right. It's actually it's, um I didn't use the orange gel. I used the AD three hundred Pro with a soft box to light it up. My apologies, getting too old. Forget what I've done. So that's what I would have um done there. Um as you can see, there's um AD AD um AD three hundred Pro with a soft box on the inside of the wall to get that look. So the 8400 is the one with the barn door. In this case, I didn't use that light in this, in this photo, to create this photo. So I'm just shooting through the wall because there's um, a lot of holder to get that to get a shape um, to frame the subject. So that's good. Maybe we can go to the next next image now. Sure. We've got my screen. Of course. Thank you. Yeah. I'll put your back. <coughs> so that's what that image was um was um how I done that image. I used the AD three hundred Pro, put it inside a wall with a nice big soft box to soften the light on on her face um to get this look. Now the next one was the one where I used the AD four hundred Pro to get that to put that outside the wall to get that orange uh, mimic get that orange sunlight um into into onto my subject. Number five, right? Yep, number five. So with this one, the setting. Yep. Are you playing the video? Yep. Yep. Can you see? Can you see the video? I yeah. can see the video. That's perfect. <clears throat> so I always do a lot of variation on the shoot just to see what looks best, what works, what doesn't work. You know, even though I've done a lot of shooting, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes I might not know what works well or not work well. So we can do a number of different type of poses, a number, you know, and uh, different lighting. So in this case, you know, the speed was one over two. Um, um, the barn door, I left the barn door on there, but I, I opened the barn door up a bit more to get more, more light going onto the wall and with an orange gel to get this, to get this one. Um, so ISO was 200, um, was F4, speed was 200 as well. 
um, for this to get this look. And she looks amazing in this one. I love it. Yeah. Another one. Um, so I aim the I, I moved the barn door on the eighty four hundred Pro and um, direct the light a bit more and just aim it straight at her face so that the orange so it's like there's a spot of orange um, sunlight hitting her face. Um, again, I, I, um, the eighty four hundred Pro was on the outside of the wall, and then I had a orange uh, yellow gel on on my eighty four hundred Pro with the barn door slightly close close the bundle slightly more to get a more directional um, um, light on her face. And I can show you the video of this one as well. Uh, that would be number five, is it, that we're up to? Here we go. Yep. Sure. Thank you. Here we go. Number five. Number <coughs> six. Number five. I think it's number five, yeah. Is it number six? We've just finished number five. Is it okay. this one? Number six then. <laughs> and this and is I, number this is number six. All right. This is the, so one. Yeah. the next one, right? The next no, no, one. I think this is the one. Uh this is the one. Yep. Sure. This is the one. Yep. So at this time I'm standing on the other side. And then the eighty four hundred pro is just on the other side of the wall, which you can't see in, in here. But um, um, it's with a yellow gel trying to mimic the sun hitting her face through the wall. And you know, this is why I love using flash. It's just you know, I can I can do whatever I want. I can do whatever mood I want. And that is the that is the remote you know that I go put on top of my camera to control all my lighting setting very quickly. Um, this is why yeah, having flash, have um, you know knowing how to use flash is, is so beneficial on a shoot. You can create. You know, you don't have to depend on the weather anymore. Looks great. Yeah, so going back, <coughs> she changed to a new dress. Uh, Just give me, I need to put your, um, your okay. slides back. Yeah, here we go. Cool. Yeah. She. She put on a beautiful blue dress this time for this photo. Um, here, I just had a bit of fun, you know. Um, I, I wanted I wanted um, to play around with a bit of blue to match with her dress. So here, I put the 8400, used the 8400 Pro, but instead of using the orange gel, you know, I, I, I play around with the blue gel um, to to um, to light the back of the back of her the wall so that she's a bit more separated from the from from the from the white wall and to um to to bring in the blue which uh, will enhance her blue dress, which is why I've chosen to do that um, for this photo. Otherwise, everything will just be you know very plain, um, you know. So this is what I've done here. The setting you know speed is six forty, f two point three point two, and also is very low at two hundred because the it was quite bright. We were shooting outdoor and there was a lot of light. So my ISO didn't have to be too high as well. Um, so again, we can play the video to see where I place the light and everything. Sure. Uh, number, all right. So number seven? I think so, yeah. <coughs> Here we go. Beautiful. You see it? Yep. Yeah, cool. So yeah, see, um, see, I had the blue light there. I still had the barn door on there um, to give it a bit more directional light. Um, you can probably you can still see in the video where I where I trigger it. You can see that little nice bluish blue glow at the back of her dress. Yeah, to get that look. So that's that one there. So the power was uh, full power, one over one. Um, this one that was shown in the video is, um, you know, the one over eight. I didn't actually use that. Use the eighty three hundred for that one. It's only just the eighty four hundred Pro for that one. Now, on a wedding day, we don't we don't have the luxury of time to play around with all these um with all these um 
you know, different lighting setup and everything. Um, I tend to go a lot more lighter, so I, mean, I tend to use the V1 and the 8200 Pro um, most of the time for my lighting uh, there, which which still does an awesome job. I don't, you know, there's a lot of way that you can, even though they are they are flashes with less power, but you know, um, you can still get a good decent amount of power out of them um, by changing your camera setting. So moving on to the next slide. Oh, I, I love this one, how, how um, she got roller, roller skates on. Um, it's very 60. Um, very 60 is very nice in this type of um, environment. Um, so you can see with the big shadow uh, on the wall, uh, the sun is coming in from the side of her. All right. Um, but I've chosen to shoot her, shoot her face on because um, it's all about getting her beautiful face and also getting that um, amazing roller skate in, in my picture to get that really nice 60, 70 vibe. Um, if, if I didn't use a flash, this is what the photo would look like. See the sun coming in from the side, you know, will cast a big shadow from her hair, her arm, everything onto her face. Um, but with a flash on, um, with an 8300 Pro, with a softbox, with a big softbox on there, um, you know, you get this really nice, 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 even light, uh, which is what I love. Um, the speed was 2500, um, the aperture was 4.5, and the ISO is, is 200 in this case. And again, we can go to the video to see where the light was placed. In this case, the light was placed in front of her. So it's quite sunny that day, but um, the sun can be good. But at the at the same time, you know, where I want the model, when I, when I, where I want um, Daniela to be, uh, is casting a lot of shadow to, to my shot. So my eighty three hundred Pro was just right on top of her with a big softbox, and then I was shooting it beneath the eighty three hundred Pro there to get the shot I wanted. It was really sunny, so my power was like one over one full power for the shot. Again, with that softbox on it, you know, even though it's full power, you know, um, you still get really nice, you know, even lighting and not too harsh on her face. So that's that one there. So without flash, with flash. Another variation. Um, again, same same setting, similar setting. Even my camera setting, I think it's very similar. Yeah, my camera setting is very similar, and the flash I didn't the AD three hundred Pro I didn't move it. I kept it where it was in the last video, and um, to get a different variation in my shot. Um, I think there's a video of this as well, Aries. Um, yeah. Now before we jump into that, uh, John's asking, do you think AD two hundred will be able to do it? In this situation, I think the AD three hundred would be better. Because the yeah, sun I think Eddie two hundred will be, be struggling. Yeah, struggle because I to get this shot, I actually was on full power, so I used mm. full eighty three hundred pro power on this shot. Mm. So I think the eighty two hundred will be a struggle. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would guess so too. Yeah. Um. The the question we're asking: Would you use assistant or usually do alone? Um. I in this in this project. Um. On a wedding day, I always recommend an assistant because again, it's all about speed. It's so worth uh, investing in the system. Uh, for a project like this, where we've got time, um, we've got time, we're not under time constraint. I did this uh, all by myself. So on the day, it was just by myself and then the, a videographer trying to um, capture some behind the scenes footage for myself to use. And the 8300 Pro, 8400 Pro is actually um, where we like. Even though it, it may look very big on it may look very big on the light stand there, but it's actually just a soft box that's really big. I've chosen a really big soft box so that the light is softer and more even. But the actual unit AD three hundred Pro is actually shorter than the AD two hundred Pro, but it's just slightly fatter, but not not by much. Um, so fatter. You know, <laughs> yeah, fatter. <laughs> I like that word. Yeah. So you know, once my wedding starts again, 
I think I will probably start using the 8300 Pro on wedding instead of 8200 Pro, um, but I'll see how it goes. But, um, you know, 8300 Pro will give me more power, but the size is pretty much the similar, where we're where we much the same as 8200 Pro. And, um, yeah, so I will consider doing that um, with my new wedding season this year. I, I would always keep two Godox V1 for weddings because um, they're just so fast um, and so small for indoor sh indoor shoot, especially. And no, most of the time, I don't even have my system. I don't even need an assistant for that. I just put the V1 on top of my camera and um, and put a dome on top um, to get those beautiful white clean look that I I, I normally do on a wedding day. <clears throat> so this one, um, we got her with Coke to get more 60 vibe. Um, I went everywhere trying to find some coke with glass on there. Keep finding can one um, uh, to get this look here. Um, if you look at the my next slide, um, without the flash, it would be quite quite dark. Um, uh, with the flash, it would just even light, even the light out. Um, my setting again is um, you know my aperture. I I, I made my aperture really really quite high in this one five five point six because I really like the texture of the wall and I want the texture of the wall to um, to come out in this photo. Speed was 100, ISO is 200 in this case. Again, I should have a video showing where my light was placed. And we can put that on, please. Sure. This one? Yep, no. that's the one. Oh, yep, that's so. the one. Yep. <clears throat> so um she wasn't too confident on roller skate. <laughs> but I uh, I yeah, but we really wanted that roller skate, uh incorporate roller skate in this shoot to get that really nice um 60 vibe. So the 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 eighty three hundred was on a big soft box, um directly, you know, straight into her face. Um um, and I don't really mind it because, you know, with a big soft box like that, you know, the light coming out, even even though it's directly straight into the face, you know, the light coming out from that will be still be quite soft um, for the photo I wanted for. Love your shoes, Master Key. <laughs> I love that shoes too. <laughs> too bad I can't fit it. <coughs> you know, she's only a size. Um, she's um, This this roller skate is only a size five. Which, which, mm. which is amazing to see. So um, again, without flash and with flash, it's just, yeah, makes my life a lot easier. So, mm. so you know, a lot of photo you can do natural light, but then you are, um, you are, you are, you are, um, you know, limited to where you can shoot. Whereas with flash, with flash, you know, with the knowledge of how to use flash, you can shoot anywhere you want, even if the lighting is, is, is bad. You know, you're not restricted to your location. And more importantly, you're not restricted to the style because, um, you know, I can even use flash in, in a 60-70 shoot and still get the 60-70 kind of look later on, you know. Um, this is why flash is so... I, I, this is why I love using flash so much because, uh, you know, it, it keeps my option open. Okay. See, since, since we are on time constraint, maybe let's yep. just show people before and after photo. Um, yeah. I will um, upload all the uh, all the uh, behind the scene clips on the uh, on the Instagram so people can see yeah. it. Would that work for you? Cool. So, so guys, yeah. uh, make sure you guys follow us. Uh, follow our Instagram. Uh, we will sh we will show you the BTS video over there. And uh, for mm -hmm. now, let's just focus on the the lights, right? Yeah, sounds good. Mm. Um, yeah, by the time we got got to this location, um, <laughs> it was pretty dark, as you can see. This is um, without flash, mm. um, and um, but you know, 60s, 70s is all about you know, you know, having fun, carefree spirit, you know, laying on flower field, you know, with the sun shining on you. That's the type of vibe we want to get. But um, um, by the time we got there, it was quite um, quite dark, as you can see. So um, so what we did was to mimic the sun again. I used the 8400 Pro. Put a, all our yellow gel on there, uh, and then, and then, um, and then, um, 
uh, shoot it from the right hand side to get that really nice warm feel on her hair, you know, on the on the flowers, and then also use the 8300 Pro with a soft box to light her her face up um, to get this look. So the settings all on here. You guys can have a look at the settings. Um, again, everything was um, everything was uh, manual um, uh, on manual, and then I can just change my setting up and down on my remote um, when I feel like it. That's why I like using manual. Again, all these photos, you know, just to get that really nice warm glow um, on Daniela. Um, again, I use two light, one for the face and one for the for the for the for the sun. So the face was the 8300 Pro with a soft box, and the 8400 Pro is with the yellow gel um, to mimic the sun to get this really nice look. Um, this one, I love, I, I love her eyes. Her eyes are so beautiful. So I thought, you know, let's do a really close up one to get that nice, um, to get 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 her get her beautiful eyes. And this is um, again, I still have um the eighty four hundred Pro at the back to get that really nice warm coming in through her hair strand, everything, and then having the eighty three hundred Pro at the at the on the side of her um to light up her beautiful uh, feature. And face so the setting is on there on all my slides here is um you know ISO 500 f3.5 and speed is 125 then we went to the cinema I, I, I was going around Adelaide trying to find a cinema that looks where it's 60 where it's 70 and we found a cinema um, that kind of um you know showed that kind of era um, but then I I think I I decided to use use 8200 Pro because um I was running out of time you know we were we we were we were we were it was around I think seven o'clock and you know we we really shot a bit too long so I went for you know something that's um you know smaller quicker 8300 Pro and because it was getting it was so dark anyway I don't want something that's too powerful as well um to blow out to blow out my subject um so I went for the, the uh, 8200 Pro, which provide less power uh, compared to the bigger brothers. Um, here is just very simple backlit the subject. You know, um, the, the the setting on the flash would have been something like you know one over eight or even one over sixteen. Um, and here I did put a grid on when I backlit. I always put a, uh, most of the time I put a grid on so to prevent the um, you know the light from spilling everywhere. The next photo. Again, you, we have the beautiful cinema, which re represent the more, you know, the older style cinema. And we have our beautiful Daniela there. Um, you know, again, it's just backlit, backlit on her hair again to, um, to um, keep her, to separate her from the background. Yeah. Um, the light on her face was just mainly from the, the cinema light. Uh, it wasn't from a flash. So moving along, um, with this image, um, I used the 8200 Pro, and this time the 8200 Pro is actually um, on the front. Um, and because I'm actually, you know, directing the the light onto her face, I want the light to be a bit softer. So here I put a dome on the 8200 Pro to give it a softer look on her face to get this final image from the night, which I which I absolutely I love. So that was my experience on a 60, 70 shoot, which I've never done before. Uh, it's not my usual style, but I always love trying out new style. And this was such a fun project that I really wanted to share with you guys how I use um, different flash and different scenario doing, you know, doing, um, getting, getting creative with it and getting a different feel um, and how I use flash to shoot in pretty much any locations and not be, not be bounded by, you know, restrictions. Um, so yeah, that is my presentation for tonight, my talk for tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys found something useful. Um, as always, if um, you have any questions, feel free. For, I'm more than happy to answer your question. You know, just connect with me on social media, and I'm happy to answer any question you guys have as well. Guys, just follow Kilo on, on his social media for his work. And uh, if you like particular images, just drop in comments. If you want his mentoring session or, you know, he have any workshop coming up, um, 
you know, dropping a message, asking. Uh, it never hurts to ask, right? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, before we actually pack up, there are two questions. Maybe we can uh, get the master key to um, to answer them before we uh, we pack up for the, tonight. I think that's uh, Godox AD eighty five W. Is that what you were using there? Yes. Yeah. So AD eighty five W. That's uh, Godox mount collab collapsible softbox. Yeah, I like that one because yes, it's collapsible. So it's like umbrella. Yeah. 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 So here's another question. Uh, for wedding, I would. For wedding, I haven't ever used two eighty two hundred Pro. Um, so, if my honest opinion, I think you should get two V one and one eighty two hundred rather than two eighty two hundred. Um, that will give Excellent. you more flexibility. Yeah. Uh, so, Alfred, just go uh, look look back at uh, Kilo's work. Um, there is a slide introducing about his work uh, wedding kit. So maybe just use that one. Cool. Yeah. Okay, let's see if there's any other. I think, wait, just give me one sec. Thanks. And what well, trigger? Uh, XT Pro 1. XT Pro, yep. XT1, right? Or X Pro? Pro, Pro. X, X Pro, yep. yep. See, people are already asking for your workshop, man. Master oh, key. I, I would love to attend too. <laughs> All right, thank you guys for your time and thank you Master Key for your uh, for your uh, precious precious time. Um, your lasagna and tiramisu is wedding and your your wife is calling so uh, with... Thank you guys. Thank you Key for your time. Have a good evening. Have a good night guys. Bye.